that was like a movie. When you go from one extreme to the next, it was horrifying. When you feel helpless, you know, no one's, no one's coming to your rescue when you're, when you're calling out for help. The only thing I could do was pray. When I was 11, a burglar broke in our house and stabbed and killed my mother, and he stabbed me 39 times. The thing that stuck out was when the pastor said, you have to accept Christ as your savior. And so I thought about it and thought about it, and I wanted Christ in my life. I knew it was a good thing, and so I went up front to, to the altar and I accepted Christ. I just knew in my heart I did something that was good. It was Labor Day weekend, and we just had our little celebration, and we was coming home and so forth, and it was getting late. And I can remember getting all my, my new outfit ready for the next day, trying to look really good for the girls, new school. I was just excited all over. <coughs> it was a man, and he was just stabbing my mom, and he just kept stabbing just like a butcher going after a meat, chopping it up. And I cried out, Jesus, and he uh, turned around and he started chasing me. My mother jumped on him and I ran in my own closet and I said, Lord, Lord, I don't want to die. I want to live, I don't want to die. I tippy toed down the hallway to get the phone and I start dialing. He noticed me trying to get help. So he throws her down and comes after me. No, no. And he starts to stab with me until he thought I was dead. I would have thought that he stabbed me one time. I didn't feel or know at that time that I had been stabbed so many times. Just let me and my son go. Just let us go. I watched him uh, take my mom's life away. In between both of us, we had been stabbed about over 80 times. He walks past me and takes the valuables. He kneeled down took his knife and he cut me on my face to see if I was gonna flinch or anything. That's how I knew who he was. After being stabbed 39 times in the neck, throat, back, arm, and other areas, uh, God gave me strength to get up and uh, when the police came, they noticed what had happened and they called the ambulance. The attacker changed my life, took my mother's life, now I got all these scars, and I barely can talk. I have to fight for my life every day. I hated him. I would just think, daydream of different things that I could do to him, um, you know, torture, so that he could feel what I went through. My mom, my everything. Her smile was, uh, it could light up the whole room. It was her, me, and my, uh, my brother, and he had just, he had already joined the military but we were uh, very close and she was my inspiration. I couldn't go to the uh, funeral because I, I was in the hospital and they said that it would be too much. After all this had happened, I was upset with God and now I was living with my aunt. At times when I go home, I'll be in the mirror cursing myself. You know, I, I hate you. Um, you know, I, I wish you were dead. I wouldn't cry or show emotion in front of the kids. But when I went home, I was a, I was a wreck. My aunt was already working on me going to go stay with my brother for a little while. Since you're staying here with us now, you know you have to go to church with us. So he said, I'm going to church? Okay, no problem. He's the, he's the adult, I'm the kid, so I just did what he said. As soon as I went inside, I felt comfort. I felt peace. I felt so much love that it was incredible. I remember I cried and I cried. And, and, and God was literally, it felt like he was in a physical form hugging me. And I just wept for a little while on the altar. And I accepted Christ in my life wholeheartedly. So I was just grateful for the change that was occurring in my life. So when, so when he said forgive, it wasn't a hard thing. I just did it. Hey, I forgive him. And so for years, I thought that I pretty much had let this thing go. But scripture tells us to pray for our enemies. And uh, I said, pray for your enemies? What, for real? You know, all this time I'm like, okay, yeah, cool, no problem, I can do it. But once it really 
came to my heart to actually pray, I couldn't do it. And I didn't want to do it. And I said, wow, you know, I do have some more, you know, understanding that I need to learn from this thing called forgiveness. And I had to pray for him. God bless him, touch his life, change his life. It's important to forgive because it has power over you if you, if you don't forgive. But once, once you let it go, God voids that gap. A lot of times we, we, we think that if I let it go, then I'm going to look like they got the best of me. But that's not the case. You have to be courageous to do it. There's no doubt. Once I did it, I felt free.